Hello everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. In this episode we're going to be taking on Muto's Temple. Look at this place. I bet it's packed with traps. We'd better be extra careful here, Link. Sounds good, Celia. So, yeah, this is Muto's Temple and we're going to have to perish the evil that's inside of it and hopefully we'll be able to convince him to give us the final pure metal. So let's go ahead and get started. Now as you can tell, the layout of this temple looks a little weird. Uh, it's filled with booby traps, pretty much as Celia told us, so we're going to have to be extra careful. And, uh, yeah, so it should be more difficult than an average temple. Uh, let's get started guys, and the first thing we want to do is, as you can see, there are two switches. If we hit them, bridges will appear, but if you pay close attention to what happens after they appear, yes, there's a time ticking. So, uh, basically we have a certain amount of time to use the bridge to pass through the endless pits that are, uh, you know, right above it. And let's wait for this bridge as well to deactivate or kind of like just vanish. Because it kind of like creates the bridge. But yeah, what we want to do is find routes that will take us to the other side. Like the easiest way to do it. So with the small time we have, we can do it as fast as possible. So by throwing a bomb here, we have a pretty neat and slick path. As you can tell, there is a trap though. So I want to be careful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a bomb right here and start running. This is going to give me plenty of time for... Uh, the bridge to appear and I'll be right by it and we'll be able to pass just like that. So it's pretty much what you want to do. And then by doing so we can hit this. And now we have another way of heading in to like this corner of the room. Because now that this door is open, yeah we have easy access. But the reason why we're doing this of course is to make our way up here and fight some enemies. We got some Stalfos, which shouldn't be too hard to defeat, especially with our power-up sword of awesomeness. Man, I love using the flame sword. I don't think I'm ever gonna change it. You know, I just think Leaf is my guy. I like having the red one with me. Um, I, I guess I could switch it for this episode because I've been using it for so much. Like every single episode, I, I use it. So we'll, we'll switch, I guess, to um. Ciela. We're gonna have to have full HP really to use it so we can shoot this beam out of our sword. So we're actually using Ciela for once, which I guess makes some sense. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as you can tell, after defeating those enemies, a bridge appeared and we hit the switch, and now a torch has been lit. Now we're gonna do the same for the opposite side, but we have to obviously make it there, you know, with the whole bridge and the booby traps just like that. Yeah. Oh, we can still actually shoot. Uh, beams of light even with full power. I just realized that. I remembered that. I don't know why I was thinking of a link to the past or whatever. But yeah, doesn't matter how much HP your sword has, you can still shoot beams of light. And I'm gonna screw this up, aren't I? Okay, the bridge has appeared for a really short period of time. I'm gonna see if I can make it even though I fell. Not there is no way I'm going to make it. We can still try. No, it's gone. Okay. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to redo this and thing is, when you fall, you waste a lot of time, so you want to kind of be careful. Let's go ahead and place this, get ready. If we don't fall, we'll make it. We don't have to worry about anything, so. Oh my god, I really failed that. Can we jump? Nope. Okay, we have to redo that one more time. <laughs> totally forgot about that trap, dude. <laughs> like, I completely forgot about that trap for some reason. This, this should be easy, especially using the bomb tactic instead of actually hitting it with your sword. Um, but, but let's just wait. Good thing we barely, like, get any time to do this, so, you know, we can just wait it out real quick. Alright, here I go. I'm gonna be patient. Patient is key, I guess. Not really, but whatever. Huh. Come on, no! We have to catch this while it's heading that direction, or we're never gonna make it. I mean, what we can do, I guess this might be a better idea. Instead of using the bomb, you can actually use your boomerang to hit this. This is maybe a better tactic if you're able to catch this, but we weren't, so we're going to be heading back. Man, this is this is a great way to start the episode. Uh, just filling a whole bunch, but I don't care. It's not really my fault, it's timing's fault. Why am I so unlucky at times? There we go, we made it. As you can tell, if you do pass the bridge, the bridge won't uh, disappear, or like just go away. Um, so, even hitting this switch right here that will open up this blue door, now that we have access to this part, doesn't really do much because you can easily use the bridge whenever you want now that you passed it. It's going to stay here forever. 
Uh, so yeah. But I guess they did that just so you don't get confused or whatever, thinking the bridge might disappear. I don't really know. Uh, the sword doesn't feel any weaker. I guess because we are, like, maybe hitting him with an extra shot with the beam of light that shoots out of the sword. So I think it's just as good as, um... The other... The other sword. The power sword. The, you know, the... Thing of power. Whatever. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it is. Because we get like an extra attack on them right before we're actually really able to hit them, which is really nice. Okay, wow, that, that didn't work there because he was like blocking my attacks. And honestly, this is getting a little annoying. It's a weird type of sound effect every time you use your sword. But yeah, okay, so we made our way to this room. As you can tell, yeah, look at the map. Really hectic. It looks confusing, but it's not. Um, it's kind of simple. <clears throat> But anyways, let's go ahead and get started by running down here. You know, we, we saw a Stalfos that was kind of like dressed up as a pirate. But I just believe they're a casual Stalfos. They don't really do much more damage. I mean, they do have a sword and they swipe around really crazy. So you want to be careful of that. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way up here. We're just going to speed through this. Just power uh, like crazy. Oh, you know what the good thing about this sword is? We can hit like likes from far away, because, you know, I dislike like likes. I'm going to keep doing that joke, because I don't really care. Alright. So, what? He didn't appear until now. That was so uncool. Alright, let's just quickly kill him. Oh, okay, don't... I can't do the spin attack, because I keep hitting the chest. But if you watch this, it should work. Nope, still didn't work. Couldn't do any spin attack. Even if you do it the other way. I guess because Link still ends up hitting the chest. Let's go and open up this chest and get ourselves a Roto Crown. That's just dandy. Not something I really wanted. What I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to quickly do this. Just so I know which one's fake and which one's real. But yeah, we want to run through this mini maze like so. Uh, be careful, though, because like, like, suck. Um, And yeah, if we make it right down here, we'll notice another one of these citrus. So it was, yeah, there's one of these earlier... I wonder what this is, and they saw one in the Temple of the Ocean King. Yes, we actually have. I never really mentioned it, but these switches are like normal switches that we usually hit, but really rusty, so when we step on them, they don't budge. So it's kind of hinting to what we're going to be getting in this episode. So yeah, let's go ahead and quickly just go cam like this. <laughs> nice. Wow, okay. That took a lot longer than wanted, but yeah, okay. Ah. Yeah, this is actually getting really annoying. The um, the sound effect the sword does. Wish you could like turn that off. But once we defeat all of these enemies, uh, a chest up here is so awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to collection and just switch back to the spirit of power. I'm sorry, I want to do something new, but uh, I don't know. I'm just used to the spirit of power. It's my thing. Like I said earlier, it's my favorite. So. Let's go ahead and run down with this hammer we just obtained. Yeah, didn't really mention it, but that chest gave us a hammer. Surprisingly, it's not called Magical Hammer, like Magic Hammer, as it is in, like, previous titles of Zelda. But this one's the most magical one, because look, it floats and it becomes big. Like, Link can control it like this, like a freaking wizard. How is this not a Magical Hammer? They just gave it the name Hammer. It's... It's weird. <laughs> but now we can use these hammers... To hit switches like this, as you could tell. And I didn't want to actually head down there. Or, I did. What, what am I talking about? We got the hammer. We're heading down here. We hit the switch. And now we're going to make our way up here. Now, let's go ahead and read the stone slab. So, uh, touch the footprint, slam the pillar. So, if we keep our, our feet on these giant footprints and slam this pillar, bam, we get flung into the air. How cool is that? You wouldn't really think this would be in a Zelda game. Because, you know, Zelda mechanics aren't as crazy and stuff. They're kind of sturdy and just kind of straightforward. Even the combat is a little, uh, is a little, like, subtle and fixed. Like, see, the words I'm saying here aren't making any sense. But I have a feeling some people might get what I mean. Like, you don't go all over the place when you're fighting Zelda. It's, it's really simple. It has simple strategy to it and everything. Um, so it's kind of weird seeing Link, like, shoot himself. This seems like a Mario aspect in a game where you just get flung into the air. But yeah, um, we're going to go ahead and make our way back here now. So that path basically took us back up where we can just head backwards. And remember that switch that we saw while heading up these stairs? Well, let's go ahead and hit it now. And it will give us access to a new area. 
So we're gonna run down this basement and if you look at this, yeah, we're back in this room just in a different part because you know we entered here. This is pretty much the entrance slash exit of the area, and now we're here. So let's get started. Uh, this kind of gets a little confusing because all of the crazy stuff now are in this temple, but believe it or not, once you get the hammer, it's actually really straightforward if you don't get confused from the couple puzzles we're going to be taking on. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Yeah, watch. Don't know why they force you to fight Stalfos. When you get the hammer, you can easily smash them into pieces. Literally one hit and they're out. So, I don't know if it's supposed to be a joke or something, but yeah. We just do that and we can advance easily. And now we are up here where the boss door actually lies. By hitting these two switches, this spike log shall start moving. Now you want to keep this in mind because if you look at this, Yes, there is a moving platform, and what we want to do is hit all these switches as we start making it through here. And if you do that and hit this final switch right there, this spiked log will start moving so you won't get hurt by it. And that's why you want to do it as fast as you can and make sure you hit them all before you make it to the end. Or, yeah, you'll, you'll be in a pickle. But anyways, we got ourselves a small key, and if we run down here, don't just run upstairs and ignore everything. Yeah, because you'll be forgetting a Courage Gem. You don't want to miss out on that. I believe, actually, that is our final Courage Gem. So one more gem, and we are 100% done. And it's a gem that we can't really obtain unless we beat this dungeon. So yeah, we're just one gem away, and after we beat this dungeon, we have 20 of all three which is going to be awesome that's a weird way to word it but we'll have like basically all 20 of each uh anyways we made our way up here and uh yeah remember this area well now what we want to do before i get all confuzzles and stuff i believe wait what i don't even know what we just did so we i believe we came out of here right after running all the way down and we got a small key with us yes okay I gotta kind of like keep my mind on what I'm doing so I just don't get confused. Basically with the small key we just obtained from the previous room, we're gonna run back up here and actually open up the door. Uh, you know, with the, the locked door, now that we have a key. And by hitting this weird looking floating pyramid, uh, it will turn upside down and well, the water will descend. So you're gonna be changing the level of the water. Uh, kind of weird, but not really. Um, kind of feels like a water temple, but the water elements aren't really that big. You just switch it to kind of navigate the area. You don't really have to worry about doing any crazy water things. Uh, this is mainly like a hammer dungeon, and you'll see what I mean. I think the coolest part about this temple is this. So the path will open when the mighty attacks change the color tiles. So do this. Yep. That's what you want to do. You want to have the tiles, the same type of tiles as the one up there. Oops, and I didn't mean to do that, but who cares? Now that we unlock the secret, we can just mess around with these tiles. As you can tell, um, it has like a radius of like where you slam. So if you hit like this part, um, you can only flip one tile and etc. So you want to kind of learn how this works and how much you can really hit. Because you're going to be doing more of these puzzles uh, as time goes on. But let's go ahead and jump up here. Hit this. I, I can actually use some arrows. And we want to use an arrow to hit this pyramid and have the water level come back up. So the only reason why the water level went down is so we can make our way over here. And now we're going to use this weird spiked bridge thing to make our way to the other side. But before, I want to grab more arrows. Yeah, um, they're like plants because, as you can tell, like, they sprout out of leaves or something. Um, it's kind of like a bomb plant, but it's in a weird crystal thing and if you hit it arrows come out. I think that's really cool. Like the equivalent of bomb flowers for for arrows. So yeah. Anyways what we want to do oops I thought I had my hammer out. I want to do this. So we want to solve this and to do so obviously we just need to do what we did earlier and that is have all of the tiles a circle. So it's kind of like XO you're playing that game. <laughs> Actually, has a lot. But anyways, what that did is it opened up this door. We came out of here. We walked all the way around here. But now that we are on this side, what are we supposed to do? Well, but anyways, what we want to do, uh, so I had to backtrack because something happened to my recording and it started lagging like crazy. But what I did, by opening up this door that we just did and all of that nonsense, 
I now have access to hitting this um, from this side, of course. So now we can uh, lower and raise the water level from all the way over here. And what we wanted to do is obviously lower it so we can continue on with our adventure. Um, and yeah, it's a good thing I actually noticed when my video started lagging. Uh, because I look at my 3DS, but it started lagging on my actual computer where I'm recording it. And I don't want that to happen. So yeah, I had to kind of like backtrack, which I really didn't do anything. I noticed it as soon as the video started lagging. So yeah, we just, what we did is we lowered the water level. We jumped down here and we're going to go ahead and jump uh, into this floor. As you can tell, this is where the boss door is, guys. But obviously we don't have the boss key. So what are we supposed to do? Just continue on. And let's start off by doing one of these puzzles. Uh, this one could be a little, wait, a little confusing, I guess. Um, what we want to do is make sure we get the center ones first. Once we get the center ones, it's really easy to do the rest. Uh, so, yeah. I just need to somehow get it. Okay, there we go. I, I think we almost have it. So, let's go ahead and flip this. Do that. Like so. And we are done. That one was actually extremely easy. But all of them are. If you know how to, like, just uh, flip them correctly. So, yeah. Oh, and also if you stand on one. They doesn't get flipped. I think that's like the best like tip you can get out of this. I solved it extremely easy without doing that. That's a tip you want to keep if like one in the center is like uh, a circle and you want to have the rest uh, like the X's. You don't want it to flip it and stuff. You can just do that. So yeah, pretty snazzy. Anyway, let's go ahead and make our way up, up here. So we're just going to ignore the boss or not look at it because we don't have the boss key. We need to grab the boss key first, of course. Like how they always let you see the boss. They're like, huh, you're almost there, but not there yet. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's go ahead and make our way up here. So you just want to jump up like so. And uh, as you can tell, it gave us arrows, and that's for a specific reason, and that's to hit this. But it shoots that way, so there must be some kind of switch. I wonder. Let's go ahead and hit it. Oh, okay, so you can't use your grappling hook. We're just going to go ahead and use our boomerang. And now it's facing down like so. So if we go ahead and shoot it now, yep, it will hit this pyramid-like thing. And the water level will rise upwards. Now we can easily pass this on this weird bridge. It looks like a bridge of spikes. It actually looks like a spine of spikes. It's weird, to say the least. But anyways, um... These tiles are a little bit different. You don't want to have all of them, oh, like switch the X's to O's. If we go ahead and read this, we'll say red and blue when they are aligned in the true form, the path will open. Now, I wonder what that is. It's going to hit this again and, you know, lower the water level real quickly. And if you look down from here, you'll notice that, yeah, there is a certain pattern. Obviously, we can't hit these ones, so we want to kind of you know have these ones look just like this one so we're gonna uh, copy it so they have two X's on the side one on the top and bottom on the left side and then two on the bottom right so this should be easy to uh, replicate let's just go ahead and switch all of them to O's that that's honestly the easiest thing to do go ahead and do this this and that and there we go so yeah you just have to know the radius of the slam and from there on, it's really smooth sailing, honestly. So with that done, uh, since this pathway has opened up, we can easily run over here. And I'm going to quickly just crush you into pieces because I'm not in the mood. I'm going to grab this chest real quick as well. And we got ourselves a big rupee. Yes, I like rupees. They're pretty interesting. But now what we want to do is... Act Oops. I want to actually move this boulder all the way to here. Believe it or not, we're going to go ahead and fling it up. And let's go ahead and fling ourselves up as well. The reason why we did that is so we can push it off of these stairs and break that boulder so we can advance onward. Let's grab this real quick before we continue. That is a small key. Obviously, we need that to really continue, so it's a good thing I picked it up. Let's hit this. We're not going to head up there because that's the entrance. It looks like a new area to discover, but it's not. Uh, and now what we're going to do, since the water level is lowered, we have a new area to access, and that's over here. And let's go ahead and open up this door with the small key we just obtained. It's a weird angle to get from Link. I believe that's how actually most door angles are. You know, you just get from uh, Link's back, and you see the door slowly crack open. But uh, anyways, 
what I want to do. And remember that there's a floor down here. We want to head down here later on. But for now, let's go ahead and try to solve this puzzle by flinging this giant boulder up and up and really see this where this is going to uh, head to. Obviously, it's going to head all the way to the top. Let's swing ourselves as well. So, bam. And, well, push it off of these specific tiles. Don't move it to uh, the left, I guess. Would it be? Yeah, it would be your left if you're looking from Link's perspective. What it did is it opened up this. And now, if we open up this chest, we get ourselves the big key. So, there we go. All we need to do is make our way to the boss, and we are done. So, I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down. Head down these stairs that I just mentioned earlier that are going to be really important. And the reason why they are so important is because, yeah, look at that. Now we can just uh, head all the way to the boss door. This is going to take us all the way there. But obviously you want to kill these Stalfos uh, before they get you because they'll knock you off. And if you do fall off, you'll have to start from the beginning, you know, this whole ride. And I mean, this ride's honestly kind of fun, so I don't really mind redoing it. But it might get a little annoying for some people. Anyways, let's go ahead and plop this in and get ready to take on the boss for uh, Widow's Temple. So let's go ahead and fling ourselves up. Woohoo! And as you can tell, it's getting wider like the platform. Or it's actually, no, it's not It's it's not getting as wide. But no matter what, we're, we're slowly progressing upwards and it's starting to look really cool. So let's head down these stairs. And this is the final stretch to the boss. Uh, let's quickly read this so that you know portal can appear I mean if we ever want to leave if you want to leave and you know you're kind of scared to take on the boss go ahead and do so I don't care but I think I'm ready look at all of these hearts to give you we don't even need that many hearts this is going to be a pretty easy boss but I'd have to say this is my favorite boss because and it kind of reminds me of like Shadow of the Colossus and you're gonna see why I mean if you couldn't tell already it's like a Colossus it's giant it's a huge Titan this is Eox ancient stone soldier and I think the coolest thing about him is the way he sounds as well kind of sounds like the Giants from Majora's Mask and I kind of like that but anyways what we're doing is yes we're flinging ourselves up and just spamming our magic hammer on him trying to break him he looks like a giant Lego kind of because he has like weak points I guess Legos don't really have them but you get what I mean he looks like a toy where he has these weird joints and they're not necessarily joints but they're things that you can easily break and we want to do that so we're just gonna keep attacking it while we can and you can fall off like that for those of you who don't know and we're on like this really cool arena as well this is just awesome but yeah uh, we want to break his uh, hard stone skin and see his wood bones where do I describe it but I don't know I just feel like that's the correct way not really it, it is. yeah I want to keep hitting these while we have the chance I didn't get a good angle on that and you know, it's a magic hammer, only can do so much. Right, let's quickly hit this one. Wait, really? Okay, let's hit this. There's sometimes you don't really get a good angle, but when he tries to check arrows at you like this, it's the easiest way to actually run around him. You can also run in between his feet. I think that's another easy way, but what I want to do is hit the two that are up here because these are the hardest ones to really get. Uh, the leg shouldn't be that hard, especially since you can easily hit him while falling down. So we're going to go and hit this a couple times. And then hit this as well. Oh, okay, I couldn't. Right, let's try to hit this one. Oh, there we go. We're almost there, guys. Let's go ahead and run behind him once more. I think this should do the cake, at least for his other arm. So there we go. And now we want to hit the back of his head, as you can tell, there's also a red one there. So, hey, sir, over here. Okay. You see me? Well, dun 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 Link's running behind him. He fling himself up. Yeah, take this karate chop in the back of the head. It's not really a karate chop. It's more of a giant hammer to the back of your skull. Who cares? It's going to do this again. For some reason, it's not registering some of the hits because I know I'm hitting him. But whatever. Okay. Come on. Okay. Hey, still didn't work. Let's try again. Oh, he already turned around taking longer than it should kind of like the beginning of this episode with with the whole switch I'm just getting a little unlucky here Wow I only got to hit him once yeah most of this aren't registering I'm pretty sure I'm hitting at the exact spot it tells you to as you can tell the hammer kind of like flails around that area so I hope you see what I'm going through okay you see that yeah it didn't work again huh we're just just start running because he's gonna turn around right now yep 
to avoid that. Oh, wow, he can actually like, stomp on us. Oh, this is good. All right, this will give us a good chance to hit him one more time. Nope, it's not. I don't mind this. Seeing a giant titan like this is really cool. I mean, it's not really a titan, but seeing this giant soldier is kind of nice. All right, come on. There we go, finally. Now, this is the easiest part, hitting his bone parts. He only has a couple in the middle. We can easily hit him all uh, on the first jump light, just like so. And there we go. Now it's time to attack the head itself. As you can tell, the uh, screen changed. Now we actually see like him on the map. We get to see the map as well because it kind of like switched the screen position where... Uh, we saw him on the top screen and the bottom screen, but now it's only the bottom screen. Now what we want to do is keep attacking his head, and he's going to, yeah, throw you off like that. And I think the easiest way to actually finish him off is to kind of lead him towards you over here. Quickly run back to this, jump up in the air so we can fall on his f head again and keep hitting him with the hammer. I don't know, I prefer the hammer. You could actually use a sword for the top of his head, but the hammer is really strong, so why not? And once you do that, more Sand of Hours shall be added to our amazing Phantom Hourglass. So look at that. Oh yeah, it's a lot. Well, it looks like a lot, but then when it bursts and jumps into your hourglass, it's not as much. So that kind of sucks, but who cares? I'm not one to complain, actually I am, because I kind of am complaining right now, but yeah, there you go. Look, that's a lot of sand, dude. That can fill up the whole hourglass, but the second it bursts, it's a lot less. And there we go. How many minutes do we have in our hourglass in total? We got more minutes. Okay, more sand. Two minutes have been added. How much, though? I'll just check my collections right now. So there we go. A chest appears, which will give us the heart container, and we can advance to where the king is. So we have uh, 25 minutes. That's, I believe, the max we can get on our hourglass. So awesome. And look at this place. When you turn it around, let's go ahead and switch the other direction. So if we run over here, look at the camera angle. Yeah, it turns completely. So we actually can see the back of a chest, something we never really got to see in this game. Let's try to open it from the back. That didn't really do anything special. Yeah, there we go. We got a heart container. Yeah. One more heart container. We're completely done. And it's a heart I kind of been ignoring that we could have gotten really early throughout this let's play but I decided to wait for so long but we'll be getting most likely in the next episode because we are so close to ending this game but look at this I can't tell if this is dirt or like like gold I doubt it's gold whatever let's go ahead and run up here and oh, look at that it's the king uh, so you're the one who restored silence to our temple my name is Muno I am the ki king of the great cobble kingdom only the true hero would have three spirits so yeah we are you know helping the ocean king is in dire trouble so he shall give us the sacred treasure the aguanine please take it with you look at how nice he is and he's counting on us to save the ocean king so we don't really have to convince him or anything he was totally down with the idea so that's just freaking awesome but yeah let's go and pick up the final pure metal piece so all that is left is heading to Zaz and having him forge the phantom sword and we'll be able to defeat Zaz with that legendary blade I am excited guys we are pretty much at the final stretch of the game but most likely gonna be covering something else in the next episode and you know that's getting the final piece of heart and uh, well as well as getting the final power gem and upgrading all of that and doing just a, a bunch of things we're gonna be pretty much closing all loose ends in the next episode and maybe the episode after that will be the finale or something towards the finale so you'll see we're pretty much at an end guys i hope you guys are hyped for this because i sure am uh so yeah thank you all so much for watching this episode of the legend of zelda phantom hour guys I, I filled a little bit with the boss in the beginning of the episode and having that weird screen lag but, uh, things happen. Nobody's perfect. So, yeah. I'm just gonna roll with this. Thank you for watching. I've been Zelda Master, and if you don't got Zelda, make sure to subscribe. Goodbye!